Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and today I have got another firewall update news video. This one is pretty interesting, pretty exciting. It should give a lot of us hope for the future of Firewall Ultra. Basically what you're seeing in the background here is my stream of Firewall Ultra from last night where the CEO of First Contact Entertainment, Hess Barber himself, appeared in the chat and uh, he just had like a, a fairly open, I would say, conversation with not only myself who was playing at the time but also other people in the chat. So some really interesting stuff was said and I want to get into that. He, was, he stuck around for a long time so there is a lot to get into. So I'm just going to jump into it right now. So the very first thing Hess says when he pops in is, what's your current take on the progression, crypto rewards, etc. Does it need to be more, faster? We have improved it quite a bit. What are your thoughts? So straight away, he opens up with like just looking for feedback immediately. So he's already got a couple of responses saying definitely better, but maybe lower the price on some things. Says kills a lot. And War Room says it's a crime how you guys have it. Uh, instead of changing progression, just change prices and give crypto to supplement change of prices. It kills a lot. Some tedious scrolling here. And then Hess says it's not where we want it yet. Agree on prices, etc. Working on that. So it sounds like they're working to reduce the prices of some things. I mean, the signal jammer is nearly 400,000. Uh, so that's a bit excessive. So hopefully they can drop the price, especially on those kind of essential things. He's responding here. He says, thank you. Still got a ways to go to where I want us. Lots of things being fixed, worked on, etc. No one is sleeping here. Really appreciate the feedback. So this is just in response to more comments coming in from Muzz and Donnie. And Kills a lot says, need to nerf the enemy shotgun in x -Fil. Now I haven't played x yet, but apparently it's like a sniper shotty. And Hess says, still, I thought we nerfed that guy. He was brutal. So if you're an x fan and that's something that's been bothering you, then hopefully that guy will be nerfed. And down here he says, taking notes, which is also comforting to see, you know. He further says, we will work on us until we cannot anymore. Now, I assume that the, the wording there implies they're going to work on us until Sony come along and say, no, you can't. So, fingers crossed, Sony aren't looking at this and thinking about pulling the plug because we want them to work on us as long as possible and turn us into the game that we all know it can be. So, Tasuki over here, or Lone Wolf Vior, says, please remove ADS, let us throw grenades normal as well. And I believe in response to that, Hess says, alternate options for a lot of features in the works. He says here then, we don't want to dictate to anyone how they have to play us. I'm all for choosing how you want it. So it sounds like options will be coming. So even if they don't get rid of something that you don't like right now, they might give you an option to do it in a way that you'd much rather prefer. And then there's a lot of talk of like cosmetics and stuff like that. So Hess says lots to come. Don't even want to talk about the new shit until we fix the current shit, which I suppose is the correct way of looking at that. You know, fix the fundamentals and then worry about trinkets and face paints and stuff like that. So there's talk of ADS, aim down sights. So he says, aim down sights, improvements in progress. Won't rely so heavily on it in future, which personally to me sounds good. Like I'm not a fan of the ADS. I'm not even using it anymore, even though by not using it, you put yourself at a disadvantage, but I just don't enjoy using it. And a lot of people feel the same way. Okay. So then he says, contrary to popular belief, we don't make a goal of making games that frustrate players. We feel it more than anyone when it's not the way we want it. And this is in response to just a general kind of sentiment that I see out there anyway, that a lot of people think, oh, they don't care. You know, they did it. They knew people weren't going to like it, but they did it anyway. I just, well, he's disputing that, and I find that easy to, to believe. You know, I don't think anyone wants to make a game that people don't want to play, you know? And then he talks about the assignment bug. So he says, the assignment bug is very frustrating. It shouldn't renew daily. Fix is coming. So I didn't even know that was a bug. I thought that was just the intention that it would be a daily. Uh, you had 24 hours to do the assignment and that was it. But apparently, no, it's supposed to be there permanently until you actually finish it. And that sounds way, way better for those of us who don't have, you know, all day kind of to get some of these done. Some of them are really time consuming. So it might take like four or five hours to get them done. Not everyone has four or five hours in a day to dedicate to firewalls. So that's a bug. And I'm glad to hear that that's going to be fixed. Suki says that and always says you have no assignments at the end of a match. So he says bugs being worked on as we speak. And kills a lot says ranks being reset really seem to hurt the most out of everything. And Hess replies to that by saying the reset is terrible. Fix coming very soon for that. So Tsuki says so you're saying Diaz should have been nerfed. And he says yes. So when we thank him, I'm in the chat there thank thanking Hess for talking to us and stuff like that. So he says of course. I usually get in trouble when I speak in chats, but I will only talk in pumpkins chats. They are watching me. Lol. 
So Tatsuki asks what was the change for Diaz and Hess says can't give details gets me in trouble but we are aware he is an exploit and fixing him. So then Muzz says if you can get it fixed so after I reload my gun my hand should go right back on the gun without needing to press the grip again. Same way it does if you're using the constant hold grip and Hess says noted so if you're one of those people uh, who likes to have the toggle grip on but the reload messes that up then they're working on that too or at least it's noted and then Hess says I assume in response to something we're saying in the in the actual in-game itself he says eyes won't be the only option soon so of course that's going to be music to a lot of people's ears who are not happy with the amount of eye kind of tracked stuff going on in the game so Tosuki says sounds like you got a lot of fixes we want being worked on and Hess replies saying so much being worked on weekly patches will continue so yeah, there has been a fairly regular cadence of patches so far, and it sounds like that's going to continue. Uh, so who knows, in a month or so, we could have a lot of these fixes in. So Muzz says, I play without using ADS, not a fan of us, to which Hess replies saying, you will like the new ADS options coming. So those people who are currently not a fan of ADS will allegedly like the improvements coming to ADS. So that remains to be seen, of course, but sounds promising. At this point, maybe Anthing will be better than, than how it is now. So over here then, Tosuki asks, any plan for Anthing for Halloween or too soon for that? Because too much work, too much to work on other stuff. Too much work on other stuff, sorry. I fumbled on that one big time. Uh, so if you remember from Firewall Zero Hour, when there was you know, Halloween and Christmas time, they would decorate the, uh, the lobby area with like you know, skeletons and spiders will come down in your face and stuff. Uh, but Hest replies saying, I'd love to do Halloween stuff, but again, anything new right now until the game is smoothed out would be an incorrect use of resources. And I think we can all agree with that. So, I mean, it's a shame because Halloween's coming up so soon. It would be nice to have us instead of having to wait for a year to see it. But under the circumstances, understandable enough. And important over here says, I may never ADS as well. And Hess says, you won't have to use ADS soon. And that's really promising. I really like the sound of that. And then Hess says, quite comically, says, if anyone wants to make a multiplayer game, I highly recommend doing a beta prior to launch. So I had missed this originally, but Tsuki actually asked, Hess says, we wanted a beta, but I assume that was out of your control. And Hess says, no comment, they are watching. So that basically confirms. Uh, Sony said no, uh, and War Room says didn't want the wave of cancelled pre-orders to which Hess replies, ouch. So when we were playing in the match itself, we had a teammate Jackpot and he kept going on about how he wants Shoot House, that's like his favourite map from the original, so he was asking Hess if Shoot House is coming. So he replies to that saying, Shoot House not in the lineup at this point, who knows what will happen in the future though. So then Dead Eye Dan asks about a kick button for AFK players. So Hess responds saying, AFK fix is done. I thought it was already patched. If not, it will be very soon. So that fix is done. If it's not already there, it's going to be patched in the next one. And I assume it's going to be, if they're inactive for a round or whatever, a certain period of time, they'll automatically be kicked. So then Chopped asked the question, just not sure why ADS was added. I mean, we didn't have it in Firewall Zero Hour. What do we need it now? lose that and use the button for something useful and then Hess replies to that saying we like to embrace new tech we leaned heavily into us maybe too heavily winky face and then Hess himself poses a question he says what's your favorite use of eye tracking in ultra if any and some of the responses he got was the tar implementation which is like the sentinel skill uh the flashbang thing which i didn't even think about at the time but yeah that was a good one and obviously the foveated rendering which is something you don't even notice is happening but it's like really important that it's there and that's why the game looks as good as it does and then there's a mention of the arms and stuff how they go inside the body and kind of look really janky so hess says i said the arms bug makes me cringe i hate janky vr so i don't know if that means they're working on us and trying to fix it but you know they're aware of us and they're not happy with it either and then we were gathered around the whiteboard in the lobby area and hess asked should we have some vr markers so you can plan and write on the whiteboard. And of course, I love that idea. And then he says, you know, and have them display in game once you enter the map. That's cool. So just, he seems to be kind of like just brainstorming here. Like what if you put a marker on the map and the whiteboard and then it would appear in the game and the overlay and stuff like that. Again, nothing that's confirmed is coming. Just something he's thinking out loud about, I think. And of course, then he said, nah, maybe not, you know, so I don't know. It depends on it. It seems like a complex thing. To do if that's what they wanted to do especially when you consider like you're not going to know where the laptop spawn is unless it shows it on the map each time 
He says that this is something that they originally had in mind. He said, yes, that was the idea for the whiteboards originally. I'm just thinking if we allow like pins or something, which then turn into markers in the actual map. Hmm. Thinking noises. So then Steve over here, which I believe is Alvo Steam, uh, Steam. Steve is asking how long until we see the pancake version. So he reckons it's going to be a flat version. Uh, he says... As long as you're not compromising the viewer version, I know it's some work, but probably 95% of the way there. And Hess says the more people play, the more we get to grow it and add crazy stuff like drones, etc. So Hess seems like he's not. He clearly says over here, I'm open to it. Not up to me though, the more the merrier. So he's open to a pancake version, which means, you know, just traditional flat to get more people in. And then he reiterates, I don't have any pull. It's all up to the overlords, winky face. So that's going to be a Sony decision. And important mentions the tracer bug. He says the tracer is coming from behind the gun instead of starting at the end of the barrel is a bit janky looking. And Hess says, hey, I hate the tracer bug. Annoys me every time I see it. And confirms it is on the list of things that need fixing. Hess then says, more emotion than you know goes into this from the whole team. It's not easy to see it imperfect in any way. We will keep pushing until we cannot anymore. And then there's more talk about doing like Halloween themed stuff or holiday themed stuff. He says, if the overlords allow us, we would love to do holiday stuff. Important says, the spider was so good from the first Firewall Zero Hour. And he says, Hess says, I wanted to do a new version of the spider so bad, maybe next year. Maybe we'll get a hairy spider next year. Now that we've got the graphics that can render hairs on a spider. And at some stage in the game, we're streaming. Uh, we're talking about what maps we'd like. And I mentioned I'd like to see a snow map. That's top of my priority. And Hess says, snow, not a bad idea. So Steve says, I don't think there is a more cussing internet attack than this game's trash or lazy devs. Crazy how these comments can get under your skin. To which Hess replies, it's not easy, that's for sure. Hasn't been a very happy month, to be honest. Just got to keep pushing on, though. Appreciate that some people think about that. Thanks. So just showing you a bit of the human side of things going on there. And some of these comments maybe are a bit, a bit overboard. And then Hess leaves as quickly, well, not quickly. He was there for a long time, but as quietly as he entered, he leaves. He says, got to run. Thanks for the open chat. Made me feel better. Love you, pumps. Bye, everyone. Thanks for the support. And then at that point, we just thanked him for coming in and being so open with us you know it was such a rare kind of a we don't get that often with first contact entertainment they're they're like they're like gagged a lot of the times by what they're able to say so it was great to get those tidbits and it felt comforting you know to finally get like a, a conversation an open enough conversation obviously he couldn't say everything he wanted to say uh, but to know that so many things are being worked on and some of these things being the fundamental things that i was worried about so i was worried about you know Maybe they can't change some of this stuff. Maybe the ADS is like just so ingrained into the core system that it'll be too much to change. But it sounds like we're not like they are going to make these big, potentially fundamental changes that will completely change how Firewall Ultra feels. And uh, weekly updates as well. He's what he didn't promise, but he's saying, you know, it sounds like that's what's going to happen. And even stuff that's already fixed or about to be fixed coming very soon, like the resetting bug and, you know, stuff like that that they're aware of. So, yeah, if you're a Firewall Ultra fan or maybe if you're not a Firewall Ultra fan, but you wanted to be one, but the way the game was, it was putting you off. Maybe these are the kind of things you'd want to hear that'll be like, hmm, you know, maybe I want to come back now, you know. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. But before I go, let me thank Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of my videos. You can check him out in the description below. Also, let me thank my channel members. Thanks to their support. They're really keeping this channel up and going. And they are the following. Muzz, Dead Eye Dan. I've never seen such behavior in the war room before. Chopped PPE. No one knows. Move Master Make Alvo World League Commentator Cast. Deej the Pumpkin Patch Kid, Pete Hawkins, Crumb, Mr. 777, Superfly AF, Moonshot, Armstrong Million, Blister, AZ6 the Mad Hatter, Pat Leading Fox Jr., Horatio Ward, Durbin Brown, Prophecy 777, Jason Ewan, Roy Schwartz, Mikey Moy, Danishine Act, Virtual Dan, SoxFan96, Wasman Days, Nate Diaz, Gino DeMarco, Piotrick F. We have always lived in the castle Mary Cass, Tree Smoker, Shadow XJ, Diego Darko Vior, 
Shapeshifter, The Amorphous Gamecast, Vodska 101, Jack Namo, Freps Nominal, Skeletor, Rudy Tay, Mr. Tortoise, and finally Infinity Lefty. Thank you very much for that support. It is appreciated. If you would like to become a member and add your name to that list, then you can do so by hitting the join button you can see underneath any of the videos on the channel, and that will help support me. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, please stay nice and moist.